Good afternoon, everybody. So um, I'm going to talk about pre-melting in iron. So what do I mean by pre-melting? These are changes in properties, dramatic changes in properties at very high temperatures. Uh, high temperatures, I'm talking about above 95% of the melting temperature. Um, iron, HCP iron predominantly, but we might look at, we'll look at something else as well. So all the work um, that I'm going to show, or most of it, uh, is, has been done by Benjamin Martorell. And we want to answer the question, can pre-melting softening in iron explain the low shear velocities observed in the inner core? Nope. That one? That one. There we go. Uh, so, as I said, the problem is that both calculations and experiments show uh, a shear wave velocity which is much higher than that observed in seismology. And the sorts of things that, as mineral physicists try and do, is say, well, could this difference be because we've got to take into account light elements or we've got to take into account nickel, which is there? Or could it be because of temperature, which I'll get onto later? And the method is ab initio molecular dynamics calculations. So uh, here are the uh, experimental results of Caitlin and her co-workers, which clearly show that the shear wave velocity oh. the shear wave velocity is uh, much higher than the prem value and this is also seen in calculations where we have um, much higher shear wave velocities than prem 15 to 20 percent and these were calculations done some years ago at uh, five and a half thousand kelvin and core densities which meant uh, 316 gpa and at the time, we attributed this difference to perhaps uh, there being some melt in the inner core. And depending on the, the structure, you could have 10 to 20% melt in the inner core. What about light elements? Well, the problem with adding light elements was it made the problem even worse, and the shear wave velocities went up. And to go along with the uh, melt in the inner core, that meant that the amount of melt that you might have in the inner core would also increase to up to maybe 40% in some cases. And there have been lots of other mechanisms to account for this difference in shear wave velocity, but basically light elements don't do it. So then we looked at nickel, and we thought, well, you know, there's nickel uh, in the inner core. Um, and when you do calculations such as these, you always start off looking at the zero Kelvin case. So um, T equals zero because they're much quicker and you can get a sense of what's, well, you hope that you're going to get a sense of what's going to happen. So here we have uh, velocities as a function of nickel content. And in particular, the shear wave velocity, we were very pleased to see, went down dramatically with nickel content. And we're very happy about this. Uh, then went on to do the high temperature calculation only to discover that that effect went away completely. And in fact, there's no difference pretty much, certainly within error, uh, of uh, shear wave velocity with nickel content. So, so nickel is essentially transparent. So then we think about temperature. Now the reason we think about temperature, so the previous calculations and calculations done by others such as uh, Ron Cohen and so on, have been done at 5,000, 6,000 Kelvin because that's what we think that the temperature of the uh, inner core might be roughly. But when you do a simulation, and you heat up your box of atoms, you, that five or 6,000 uh, degrees is only about 85% of the melting temperature of your box of atoms because the uh, simulation tends to overestimate, overestimate melting by about 20%. So we thought, well, let's just jack up the temperature a bit and see what happens. And we did this for pure iron and then added some light elements and looked at some other um, materials. So up until uh, the end of last year, this was the story. You had uh, simulations of elastic constants um, up to, at 360 GPA, up to five or 6,000 degrees, and they varied not very much and fairly linearly. And then if you heat it up a bit more, you find that this happens and you get a, a significant reduction in all the elastic constants. And this propagates through to um, the shear modulus, uh, which in turn propagates through to the uh, wave velocities. So um, once you've gone up to past 95% of melting temperature, 
you find that your wave velocities, your shear wave velocities, happily match uh, the PREM value. So we can't stop there because we have to say, well, what happens, you know, perhaps it's melted. Um, so you have, we have to be careful that the thing is still a solid. So uh, on the left, we have mean squared displacements and all these wobbly lines uh, that are essentially horizontal. That means that it's a solid. And this very high temperature red one that shoots up uh, is the liquid. So we're happy that um, our calculations for the elastic constants and therefore the shear wave velocities are uh, on a solid material and the thing hasn't melted. And this is also confirmed by the thing on the right with the radial distribution functions, uh, which show that we have some uh, nearest neighbor dif distance for everything up until it's melted and then when it's melted, um, the nearest neighbors disappear. So we're happy that we've got a solid. Is the inner core in a pre-melting region? Well, this is almost certainly yes. Um, if we look at this schematic of temperature against pressure for the inner core, when the uh, inner core is crystallizing out of the outer core, it's effectively at its melting temperature, so our homologous temperature is 1. And then uh, if we look at the melting curve of Dario, that uh, follows the red line. And then if you look at a, a sort of standard geotherm, you find that the um, inner core is around 99% of melting temperature. So it is definitely in the pre-melting region where these effects are taking place. We've got to think about density because those calculations were all on pure iron. So then we added some uh, silicon to the iron and um, to match the density. And uh, happily, this too showed pre-melting effects, um, reducing the shear wave velocity to uh, seismic values. We then looked at FCC iron because nickel uh, stabilizes the FCC structure, so we wanted to see what effect that might have. Um, but what happened was that the uh, FCC uh, simulation turned into HCP before it reached the pre-melting region. So um, it, it turns into an HCP type structure, and all the pre-melting thereafter is on an HCP structure again. So FCC doesn't matter. So these pre-melting effects have been observed before uh, by simulation. Um, the, these are the results on magnesium using classical potentials. And you see a very similar drop-off in the elastic moduli just before melting. And also, uh, we had an intern over the summer who looked at aluminium. And, sh and she, too, uh, saw, again with classical potentials, a significant reduction in shear modulus uh, with temperature. So why does this shear? Um, softening occur? Is it possibly because of defects in the crystal? So what do I mean by defects? In the context of the ab initio molecular dynamics simulations, I'm talking about over and under coordinated iron atoms by about 20%. And these, um, I've put defects in inverted commas, um, these atomic defects increase dramatically with temperature uh, until they're about 40% when, it, when the thing melts. This isn't new, this idea of defects. Um, Belanoshko uh, wrote, came up with this idea in, I can't see it, 2007. And what we have here, he's done uh, a calculation on millions of um, iron atoms in the body-centered cubic structure. And what he found, uh, well, there were two ways he did this. He did this uh, purple wiggly one, which was uh, putting in grains into a several million atom uh, BCC structure. And then the s slightly smoother um, red and blue ones, uh, he crystallized out of a melt, nucleating on little body-centered cubic um, boxes. But the point is, is that in each case, the defects that he's put into his structure show that the shear modulus reduces, again, significantly with, um, well, in this case, simulation time, but at high temperatures. So are defects, are thermally activated defects, are they real or are they an artifact of the calculation? As I said already, we're at temperatures that are above the, inverted commas, real melting temperature of iron at core conditions. So is this just a, a, an effect of superheating? And I guess the short answer to that is I don't know, but one way to to see if there's any validity to this argument is to see if any of this stuff happens in real life. 
and uh, it has been observed uh, experimentally in tin. So this is the shear modulus of tin with um, temperature showing the same sort of pre-melting behavior. So it does happen in real life. I can't necessarily say that what we have is, is real, but at least we know that it does happen. So to summarize, uh, experiments and calculations show um, shear wave velocities are higher than expected from seismology. Light elements make the difference even worse. Nickel is transparent, um, but if we go to much higher temperatures, 95 plus percent of melting temperature, we can get a significant reduction in shear wave velocities, which matches seismology. And this is the pre-melting is in the same region that the core inner core is in. Um, but we have to do a lot more work to find out if this result is actually true. And the problem with that is that you're looking at 99% of the melting temperature, which experimentally, I imagine, is a nightmare. Um, it's not that great with simulations either. So it's quite a tricky uh, thing to get hold of. And we need to have a much more thorough understanding of defect structure of our calculations. And what is clear is if you extrapolate from a few th three, four, five thousand degrees, both in experiments and in uh, simulations, you have to do it be, uh, you have to be careful because you might enter a region of uh, pre-melting for the inner core. Thank you. We have time for some questions. So it's 20% over or under coordinated from 12 or co coordination of, of uh, iron atoms in the HCP structure. They are transient, right? There's, on average, they're still at uh, uh, their lattice sites, but you have more sig over and under coordination. Okay, so uh, well, we haven't done the thermal expansion in this way yet, but on other materials, it is shown to, uh, that you do get a difference in thermal expansion and heat capacity. And in, in one case, and I can't quite remember what the material was, even density, although I'm not suggesting density for this, for iron. Any other questions? All right, let's thank Ludunka again. I need to take a look.